What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Digital Art with Jesus Conde and today we're going to be doing this scene it's a futuristic base, uh, futuristic military base and I wanted to make a scene of a landing ship or trying to pick up some kind of a, a very heavy cargo and for this I'm going to be using um, 3ds Max and Photoshop also I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, photo bashing So let's start. Let's let's jump into it. The first thing that I do. This is obviously a, a, a process It's not the entire step-by-step -step tutorial it would be like I don't know like 10 videos or something like that I'm trying to Compress all the information in just one video so you guys can see the whole process because people is having um, I've, I've been asked like how do you do this like how, how do you do 3d and 2d together like what's the, what's the process um, and you will see the reality of it uh, in in this whole video and how uh, weird <laughs> it is to work with 3d and 2d at the same time anyway so this is the the first step that you have to do obviously uh, for everything that, that you do you you better do a, a sketch first that's the first step because if you don't do a sketch, what's going to happen in 3D is that you're going to be doing um, a lot of a lot of tests, and these tests are not always all going to to be uh, successful. Uh, so to avoid that a little, what you can do is make a sketch, then just clean it a bit, like what I'm doing right now. Um, and it doesn't have to be like super tight you can do something very very sketchy and still be a lot uh, of help as long as you do uh, some kind of a pre-visualization of what you want to do instead of just jumping into into the 3d with like uh, just right away because you're you're eager to to work on the image you're, you want to start as soon as possible yes that is important to have that energy and that um <clears throat> how, how do i call that like to have that uh, to, to be hungry by of creating new images uh with this technique and stuff like that you can be uh, all that excited to, to create but if you don't do this step what's going to happen is you you could take at least like three times more uh, time that if you don't uh, do this um, little sketch first um, also what's going to what's going to help you is to avoid uh, bad ideas like really really bad ideas and that, that that happens a lot with 3D, especially with the with the with the size of things, like um, how how big things are, um, the proportions. Like m maybe you have some proportions on on 3D that look uh, cartoony or that look um, weird in terms of like wh whatever uh, we're talking about. Like instead instead of doing something. Um, correct in terms of uh, um, size let's say um, how, how tall a building is uh, compared to a person or to a vehicle stuff like that if you do a sketch first you start you start thinking all this stuff uh, beforehand that's really really important um, even if you you don't see it um, when you do the 3d you start figure those things out while you do it but if you have a base like this sketch then you have half of the battle already won um, also it will keep you um, it, it, it will put a limit uh, in what you're doing instead of just doing just whatever whatever uh, I, an image you can take years doing one image if you want to uh, but this is this little sketch will keep things like more um, on the line. Like this is this is what I got, what I want to achieve. Uh, I can do a little bit more. I can do a bit less if I want to. But at least this is this is the base. So the first idea that I wanted to try was to make it a desert. Um, that the idea didn't 
didn't really work for me. I did a little sketch with color that I didn't I didn't put in this tutorial. But you'll see some of some of that in a few minutes. And that idea really didn't um, work for me because it felt it's starting to fe to feel too much like Star Wars in terms of um, the environment. It looks too much like Tatooine. Also, the 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 jungle one looks a bit a bit like Star Wars because of the you know like Endor base or stuff like that. <clears throat> but it doesn't doesn't seem too much seems too much like it. So I'm okay with it. Um, anyway, I did the that sketch of color and I hated it. So now I'm jumping into a step that I, I actually figured it out in this uh, video. So uh, don't give me too much credit for it. Uh, really, um, I was like, okay, how can I sped up the modeling process without um, losing the idea that I have in mind? After the sketch, what you can do is just try to try to do a profile view of everything that you have to model, or, or at least the 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 bulky stuff, the the huge stuff. Uh, in this case, will be the towers will be the, um, the the platforms that are, are going to be on the sides and like that one this this is the color sketch that i did it's very it's very bad i know uh i did it like in uh, i don't know like in 10 minutes or something so <laughs> don't think i spent hours doing that anyway like so this these panels um I was trying to think, okay, so I gotta make some cool panels to maybe to put on the floor. At the end, you don't really see them, so it doesn't matter that much. Just the big stuff, this these ones that I'm doing here, you can see like I'm adding, I'm, I'm adding like details and lines and stuff because uh, it looks too simple. So that's another thing. When you're doing this these kinds of uh, profile views. You start to think more like, okay, so how is this really going to to work? So this is going to be like a just this shape, and it doesn't have a de detail at all. So I need something in there to make it look like it has um, a meaning to be there or it has some detail. So I'm putting this kind of like uh, structures and st stuff everywhere um because i think i need something else in there it can just be just shapes just for the sake of being there so <clears throat> i thought i thought that was really uh important step at least for me uh when i was doing this <clears throat> also it, it's a way to to like um try stuff but still cheap that you, you're not modeling anything yet, so because you're not modeling anything yet, it's, it's kind of like uh, you're still testing ideas. And right now, it's just uh, you have to just put a couple of hours of modeling to get the 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 big stuff uh, off. And I I actually lost part of the recording on this video. Like, didn't actually lost it. It was broken. Uh, the video got stuck and all I can see in the, in the recording was the mouse moving but the image was like still so I have to erase that video later on I discovered that you could use the original files of the program but uh, I discovered that after I erased it so anyway uh, this is what I got from that part of the process which is just um, everything is basically really simple lines and, and, and really simple models like this is just a cylinder with the with the edges with rounding edges and the other parts are, are a double pol editable polys uh, it's very simple uh, technique in 3d max i will i will make some tutorials about that if you guys want uh, later didn't put them here because the video will be like super long and some of some some people might want just to see the process uh, overall instead of a detailed step-by-step -step thing and <clears throat> as you can see I'm just copying and copying and doing symmetry in some parts um, so I'm, I'm trying to get to this point where I have a lot of stuff going on with without too much effort 
and that's one of the most important things for me when when I do 3D. Like if I want, if I'm going to use 3D, it's because there, there is an advantage on it. Uh, in this case, we'll be adding and adding uh, details and stuff like that without really hurting um, the rest of the image because the the rest of the image haven't even um, get done yet. I haven't even started on, on the rest of the image. And right now, what I'm going to do is just copy this um, this tower, this kind of a structure here. I'm just gonna copy it and and put it like four times on the on the scene that I'm doing. And I'm getting all the other ones for free because I already did the first one. But if I was was doing it on, on drawing or painting, I will be I will have to draw each one. And if I want to do a change on one. I have to do that for um, all three three more times, so it's like I have to work a lot more if I don't do it on, on 3D, at least for this painting. Right now what I'm doing is just working with splines and there's a very cheap technique uh, to achieve this kind of things. You can see that the, this model is very, very, um, <laughs> very, very sketchy, very, very simple, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to paint on top of it and <clears throat> because I'm going to paint on top of it, it's going to be like, and it's also going to be far away. Uh, it doesn't matter too much, like what, like the, the kind of detail that he has. So all I want is a cool silhouette um, that I, that kind of um, works with with the with the with the sketch that I have. So I'm not too worried about adding and adding more detail to this stuff. So you can see um, that I'm working with really simple shapes. It's not that big big deal, uh, honestly. Once you kind of know what what I'm doing in terms of a, a technique, uh, splines is just a line that you create, and after you have the line, you can just apply a modifier that makes it um, three dimensional. And that's a very, very simple uh, thing to do, honestly. There's nothing complex about it. Maybe the other stuff that I'm doing was just uh, um, extruding and adding um, faces in some places and, and, and doing, um, <clears throat> how you call that, uh, chamfer uh, and some parts and stuff like that. Maybe that could be a little bit difficult. Maybe um, adding UVs could be a little bit difficult for some people. But all I need is uh, a base, and having the base is just enough. So <clears throat> you can see that this is just a box <laughs> with the with chamfer um, edges. So it's actually something very very easy to do. Just a box with chamfer edges, and it adds something else to it. So it's, it's worth the. Also, this, this one is just a box with chamfer edges and I duplicate it and move it on top. Uh, that kind of thing. So you can see that doing really simple shapes, you can achieve actually some a little bit of detail in there. So now I'm just cloning the, the tower um, as, a, as another advantage of 3D. You can clone things here and there um, infinitely. So that kind of that kind of thing is really helps when you're trying to uh, to do a stuff that repeats a lot. Like this this kind of shape you want you wouldn't do. I mean you could just have you could just have one shape of these ones, but the idea will be uh, at least it makes sense for me that um, in a, in the real world you have uh, things that look exactly the same. Uh, one side of another one, like for, for example, houses in um, like in, 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 in cities look exactly the same one uh, to another. Uh, well, actually, obviously not every all of them, but we build the like humans build in in series. Like um, we have re repetitive shapes all over the place. So having the just the power to do that in 3d just copy things and just place them at, uh, on the one side of uh, another and actually 
having just the, the the power of changing something and that thing will automatically transform the the, the other one the the copy of it that's another huge thing of 3d that you get for free when you're working with 3d <clears throat> so right now i'm just going to make the tower which is basically just creating a lot of horizontal lines and then trying to make a sense of uh, how to how to uh, translate this in, in three-dimensionally. Three uh, right now I'm just doing one side, which is like uh, resolving one problem at a time. And that really helps just having that opportunity of doing, uh, of doing this makes it so easy um, in terms of uh, creativity. When, you, when you're doing a drawing of this, uh, you have to draw each tower um, and it's, it's going to be really painful in terms of uh, uh, working with perspective and stuff like that. I'm not saying you cannot do it, you can totally do it. There's people that can do that. I don't want to do that. I want to I wanna spend more time painting than drawing at least this kind of thing. If I, if I want to draw, I would like to draw characters, for example, I would like to draw uh, ships, although I really like to do ships on 3D too. Um, that kind of thing I, I enjoy drawing a lot more, but if it's going to be on the background, for me it's really painful to do. So this, the uh, just having the, the, the power to do this is very, very important to me. So right now you can see that I solved the tower problem very, very easy. with just uh, moving things here and there. Um, and that's a that's a really that's a huge advantage of 3D. Also, placing things, like moving uh, stuff around with a, with a, just the fact that you can move something and the the light just adjusts to the to the new place that you move the thing is a uh, it's huge. I mean, uh, who who would want to do that? Like any painter will be thrilled just to be able to draw something and then just move it and the, all, everything just change automatically to whatever the place that I moved that doesn't exist uh, only only in 3d you can do that it's basically like you were playing with the real world because images today look pretty much realistic in terms of lighting the, the renders that we're using lately are very very uh, well um, do very very well rendering uh, in terms of realism they do an excellent job so for me it's just crazy that people don't want to take advantage of that um, before I was really re really um, what's the word um, hesitant to, to work with 3d because I, I thought it was like cheating um, then I discovered that a lot of uh, people that are considered pros work with 3d and even if you don't if you don't work with 3d you get 3d files anyway if you work with uh, video games sometimes you get the the renders of the game or you get the geometry of the of the game to paint on top stuff like that and that's like uh, I mean what was the difference of doing this by your own or getting it from the art department of a, of a game studio, of a movie studio. So it's the, it's the same thing. So right now for me, just the fact, just, just having the opportunity to use to create something from scratch with, with modeling and then just uh, use it as my advantage is great. <clears throat> okay, so right now what I'm doing is just cloning things to start populating the scene uh, and trying to place my camera uh, the way I want it, at least uh, with what I had in mind for from from the sketch. Um, also, the the aspect ratio of the image, how wide it is, uh, helps me like uh, move, helps me place the camera whatever I want it. Because right now, um, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is just find find. All the the perspectives that I did on the on the on the concept on the little sketch, but at the same time, I wanted to, I wanted to feel very cinematic, like it's a scene from a movie, and in, a, in, in it's not just a painting uh, that I'm doing of some place. 
So trying to find the camera is, is also a very uh, very easy thing on uh, to do on 3D that you couldn't do on 2D, which is a huge advantage. <clears throat> also, I'm trying to, to like see uh, where I, where I will have like. Uh, what's happening with the lighting? Like, wh what do I need here? I need these towers to be longer so that sh so the shadow looks different. Maybe I need another cube in there to block that light coming from the left because it looks too much. Uh, what's going to be outside of the walls? It's going to be mountains. There, the light wouldn't wouldn't be so um, wouldn't pass if if the sun was uh, was at this height or what the, the environment is going to be like. Um, this tower that I put there, I had to change the position because of um, the what I wanted, how I wanted it to look. And I actually have to put it even lower. So that's another thing. Um, you can just put put it there, just rotate it if you want to, to have it in a different position. Uh, and this is, this is how it's done in terms of of um, placement, you just try things, you just move things around. Uh, it doesn't really matter um, because you're getting all the stuff for free. You already did those models. Right, right now I'm doing uh, a little shape to break the silhouette of the wall in the back. I don't like to have just a wall uh, in the back. Um, looks like it's there for for just for the sake of um, blocking the. Uh, the the horizon. I don't want it to feel like that, so I just made that those little blocks in there, those little shapes, and creating. I, I was thinking, well, the, the floor is going to be all uh, maybe it's going to be dirt, so we need concrete on the floor. But I don't want to do, I don't want to do like all the floor in concrete. I want to have some green in there. Here I'm, I'm, I'm for first time I'm discovering the the <laughs> that you can see the the passes of the treaty in there in real time. So that <laughs> I was like playing with it. Um, yeah, well I stopped. <clears throat> okay, I got a, a lot of stuff going on already on the scene. Uh, right now I'm going to start with the details on the floor, but. Some of the details are actually going to be lost. We, we're not going to be seeing them later uh, because of, I did some changes on the placement of the camera, but I didn't want to cut all the process because I already have some stuff cut it because of uh, problems. So I don't, I don't want to cut more of it. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's really easy. Just creating splines, extruding stuff uh, and play, placing things. Other thing that you can do when working with 3D is using 3D assets. I didn't have any assets in this uh, tutorial, uh, but I bought a, a couple of them. Uh, for example, you can you can find on internet assets f uh, to work for, uh, 3D, and it's basically just kit bashing. Uh, what kit bashing means is that you take pieces from other other objects. Uh, to put detail on one that you're doing. So if I have these towers, but they look like very, very simple in, in terms of shape, uh, and it, I can find, uh, for example, I can find doors, I can find, uh, let's say, like lights, light posts, and stuff like that, and you can find all the stuff on the internet, uh, sometimes for free, sometimes you have to pay for them, uh, the best ones are the paid ones, obviously. Um, but that's another that's that, that's another price. I mean, you, you can you can do stuff all by your own, or you can just buy stuff or or um, download them for free. There's a lot of free content on the internet uh, these days. Uh, very different from when I started to do these kinds of things. Um, so, for example, I downloaded uh, like three three groups of, of assets uh, from a guy on, on our station. Uh, actually, I, I, I bought them on Gumroad. It was $2. Uh, 
Uh, but but I, I mean again, two dollars is like nothing. It's like it's like a coffee. Uh, some coffees are even more expensive than that. And it also he also gives them for free. But I, I didn't want to take them free because I feel like he deserves um, com a compensation for for that. Um, anyway, they ha he had like uh, hydraulics uh, kind of kind of uh, uh, parts. He had uh, joints. He had uh, all, everything mechanical. I didn't use them in this one, but I will use them on the next tutorial. Also, co bought a couple of um, asset um, objects from Vitaly Bulgarov. He sells them on his page. Uh, those are a bit more expensive, but they are super huge quality and they look super cool. So you wanna, you might want to check that out, Vitaly Bulgarov. Um, at some point he jumped in his career by doing uh, one model per day uh, and uh, when you see the models you you know what I, what I what I mean when I see when I say it's crazy that he did one model per day because I could do what I'm doing right now on a day but it's not the same thing when you see his models you you will <laughs> you will be like what the fuck this guy did this in one day it's crazy and I don't, I don't remember how many days he said um, he worked on them. Like he did like one per day. I don't know how many how many days he did it, but he did a ton of, of these guys. Anyway, so I'm I'm going in another direction here. Right now, what I what I want to do is just change the landscape a little. Um, I'm using this uh, tool um, where you can paint the formation on the on the mesh. So I have like a little um, mountains here and there that, it, that they look um, like terrain. That really helps to sell the, the, the image. And now I'm adjusting the lights again. Uh, what I will do eventually is just changing the background to, to a photo and that will give me the lighting. Uh, or at least I will take the lighting from the photo. Um, and there's a huge, there's another advantage of work, or, or working with 3D. Uh, you can change the lighting however you want very quick. Um, now I'm starting to add some materials, which is important because right now I, I know what it looks like everything in gray. Maybe it doesn't look that bad if every, everything is in gray and the same color. But once you start adding materials, you start to see the difference in contrast between the material, uh, what lighting could be, could be better in terms of the position of the, of the sun and all that. And that's very important that you have that in mind. The, w w when you're working on, with 3D, you have to always consider that eventually you will have different materials and the lighting and everything will look different. Uh, depending on what materials and what texture that you're using. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. <clears throat> and right now you, you start to see like the advantages. You start to see the advantages of, of working with 3D. Uh, just putting textures is really, really easy. Uh, There's really no effort at all um, in terms of, uh, of what you have to do. Just add something there, and because we're working actually with concept art, we're not working uh, like we're not doing final 3D art. We are doing just you are, we're we're doing this to have a base, so we can paint on later. And the better this base is, the better the image is going to look at the end. So you you might want to spend some time doing the the this image this uh, this base. And so, so when you go to do the, the the details and everything else that you're going to do later with Photoshop, it looks ten times better. <clears throat> so you can see how you get a lot of stuff for free, like the bounce lights and the casting, sh the cast shadows. Uh, here I'm testing with colors, something that you you could do. In 2D, obviously, you you could just try colors on top, but it's going to be is you better do it in a very rough state uh, because if you're doing like um, way in the 
in the image uh, it's going to hurt a little for example uh, you could use like huge hue and tone saturation um, yeah I, I think it's called that like the the color adjustments on, on Photoshop you can change it there uh, just selecting the things that you want to change the color but here is basically just picking whatever you want to change the the color to and just changing it to whatever you want and the light will also change uh, depending on what you what you're doing the light will change if it's, if it's a big structure that you're changing the color to what you want to get is a huge difference in lighting because that that huge uh, structure could change the color of the scene depending on how big it is if I have a huge red wall everything that is in front of the wall is going to be changed slightly uh, with red color because because of bounce light because of the, how the light reacts to the surfaces and right now you can see I just change it to blue looks way better than I than I um, than what I had before with red um, now I'm starting to like doing changes here and there because I, I don't like everything to look the same <clears throat> all those kinds of things are, are starting to look more uh, are starting to look way better for me now at the beginning like everything at the beginning I was a little bit hesitant to do all this on 3d but now like I'm, I'm trying to trust more in the tool and enjoying it a, a little bit more so I wanted to do a sketch of the ship as you can see it's something very very um, sketchy doesn't have detail at all and this <clears throat> This model of the of the ship is very very uh, simple because it's going to be very far away, and I was like, I'm, I don't want to spend too much too much time doing the ship. I'm going to do just a base, so I can have the same proportion on, on this ship. And I was thinking on doing one maybe in the back, so you can see difference of scale, uh, and that gives you a better sense of, of space. If you have two things that are supposed to be exactly the same at different distances. Uh, they should look in different different size and, and if you do that uh, what you get is a sensation of um, depth like this is farther away because it's, it's the same shape and looks smaller so it looks like you have space between them and that kind of detail really really helps when you're doing uh, 3d because you just can just copy things and move them to the back that's it and you get that really easy <coughs> But because I still want to draw, I still want to paint, I cannot spend just hours uh, doing a ship on, on on 3D because that's not the idea. The idea is to make this quickest as possible, um, as smooth as possible, with no not so many um, uh, changes uh, or, or stuff like that in the 3D model. You can do whatever you want on 2D. But in 3D, I'm trying not to do too many changes and going back to 3D too much. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, I went back on this image on 3D like just two times. And the, the last one was to, to move a couple of things around and change the camera. And that's it. I never went back to the image again after that. Uh, <clears throat> no, that was the first time. The second time was to put... Uh, some characters that I model on ZBrush and we, we're going to be seeing that it's not like a super tight 3D model on ZBrush it's more like what I'm doing right now just a base so I can paint on top and keep the proportions right uh, and that really helps that really helps um, to speed up the workflow at least for me some some person could say well you could just, just, draw, just draw the soldier from scratch yeah I could but you guys will see what I mean, what I mean by by all this process with the Seabridge uh, soldiers in few minutes. <clears throat> so now what I have to do is just implement that to put it on the image, put it the size that it should be, <laughs> not a huge size, it's a normal size uh, ship, and just tilt it a little so to give it more sense of like 
it's, it's not like perfect uh, landing. It's, it's just trying to level the the ship as it, as it's moving. Uh, also, the one in the back um, should feel like it's going to to come to to do something next. Um, it, it shouldn't look like exactly the same, uh, and and you can see because they have a difference in how, how they look uh, but it's the same ship and you should be able to recognize that it's the same ship so right now what I'm doing is just going through some images that I bought on the internet these ones I bought them on photoshop photobash.org which is the page that the guys from level up created and they have a huge amount of, of photos um, to get inspired from and to use uh, in photo bashing and it's really really um, impressive what the guys ha have there uh, they go out and take these incredible pictures and they sell them at a very um, acceptable price I, I won't say uh, it's expensive but I won't say it's cheap either um, but for the amount of work that they, they, they take doing it and the amount of work that, I, that that they are saving me, I will say is is a it's a pretty sweet deal. Uh, the thing is that if you rely too much in, in photos, you will have to be basically be buying them all the time. <laughs> Every time they they come out with a new um, theme or a new a new uh, set of photos, you have to just go running and buy it and I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's okay with a lot of people depending on what your role in the industry is how much you use those photos you could find this useful i do i have a i, I think i bought like eight or nine um, of it, of them of their um, folders with photos and this one was one of them um, this one that is really cool with just skies. There's a lot of skies on one folder that's really cool too. Um, and stuff like that. <clears throat> so right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sketching on top of that 3D image because I want to know what it will take to, to get this to the next level. It's basically ba making an inventory of what are the things that you should do to look to make this image look more detailed. And it's just, as you can see, it's a very, very bad sketch. Uh, but it helps me, it helps me see, okay, this is all the stuff that I'm missing on this image. I should, be, I should have all this in there and I don't have it. So now I know in my mind how much I have to still work on this instead of just trying things and putting model for no reason. Um, so th that's a that's a good way in, in my mind. That's a good way of working with 3D. Just having this sketch uh, done at the middle of the process can really save you a lot of time. So now, because I change the the background uh, on the on the image in Photoshop, I have to change the lighting so it fits uh, a little bit more with what I have there. So right now I'm just testing. It should be more bluer, it should be greener. Um, it shouldn't be too direct. It should be really, really soft shadows, actually, to 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 have something um, that looks cohesive. I think is the word. Um, so that kind of stuff is really important because it's, if not, your image is going to look completely disconnected from the background. The, the image that you have on the on the front should, should be able to fit on the background perfectly with no problem uh, you can do that uh, having the right lighting and the right atmosphere so the atmosphere could be achieved with a little fog and the, it, the, the lighting you just basically have to uh, you could actually just pick the colors from the photo if you pick the, the blue of the sky and, and put it as your as your how you call that like like the ambient lighting of your scene or if you you use the photo as a as a lighting source you can do that also on 3d like an hdr uh, kind of uh, image and that also helps 
if you do it that way. So now I'm adding little details here and there. Um, sometimes this stuff um, you just figure it out in the moment. Like some part that doesn't even need to make a concept before because um, they're just like um, to feel the, uh, just just to feel the the space. Um, you can basically be just any shape in there and. It will look like if uh, has a mean to it <clears throat> um, because at the end we, we cannot forget that we're trying to make an interesting image um, it's good that you make it functional that I mean it's, it's expected uh, <laughs> it's better said it's expected that you do it uh, functional um, but then it also has to be um, it has to have good aesthetics and <clears throat> I mean th there's some stuff that can be functional but not not pretty I, I don't know exactly know how to say it so you at, at the end you have to kind of like find a balance between what functions and what doesn't here what I'm doing is just lowering the camera because um, I wanted to feel more like from the ground. Like if, if I was going to shoot this with a camera myself, where will the camera will be? And that's why I had to do this last uh, minute changes, uh, put the tower lower, um, stuff like that, with, which uh, doesn't make too much sense in terms of uh, what, what, I ha what I have already in the image. Like the towers in the back are, are taller but um, in terms of composition uh, for me it makes sense so now I have what I have to do is just keep things on scale so it doesn't look weird and start adding details here and there to make to make things more believable <clears throat> something that I will be doing is making some a couple of characters on ZBrush um, and, and you will see how to integrate how I integrate them here I'm trying to to make uh, more of the the lower part of this image uh, I need more so I'm just trying to extend the, the, the like how, how much vertical it is um, and also what really helps is to make it um, a small object when you make it a small object you can go in, uh, do some changes, and you keep the. You you can kind of keep the original file. Uh, you can just make layers on it if you want to do changes, but the one that mess of, of layers on the original file, um, stuff like that, is really helpful when you when you work with smart objects. Now all this <laughs> sketch that I did um, is completely lost. Uh, all the all the stuff that I that I sketched. But it's fine because uh, at the end I, I know all the things that I have to add. So we start <clears throat> adding the the new shapes and new new um, how I call that. Like I'm just painting over everything that I have. I'm going to start painting on top of everything that I have, so I can find a better solution in terms of aesthetics. Right now, the I don't like the the ship too much, so I'm, I'm starting to change the shape a little bit. But what I have functions as a base uh, in terms of um, overall shape and color, because the lighting is already on and the material of it. If I wanna, if I wanna just um, modify the shape, I just have to use the eyedropper and keep um, painting on top of it and. I don't have to do anything too crazy to to make to make it look good because the the colors are already there. That's a huge advantage. Uh, that's basically why people uses a lot of photos. Uh, the thing about 3D is that basically you creating a photo reference for yourself, and that allows you to use the colors, the correct colors, uh, and the correct lighting easier. Um, 
with the problem that I have with using using a lot of photo bashing without 3D is that I'm limited. I'm limited by um, by the pictures that I use. But if I if I use the photos but I draw on top, I, I can paint new stuff. But I still need the photo for the lighting uh, to be accurate. So 3D, what allows you to do is kind of make your own photo. Uh, for some for some things as you can see right now I'm, I'm not struggling with the with the lighting of what I'm doing right now because it's already there I already have that information so that's why, why 3d is so useful here I'm trying to lose the, the that wall I don't, I don't want to have that break between the dirt and the wall so I'm trying to just put a little bit of a Kind of, kind of get a feeling of vegetation in there um, without being so um, detailed because you don't really need it. It's very, very far away, so you don't really need to to have something too detailed in there. <clears throat> anyway, so having a little bit of of, of foliage. I wanted to use uh, photos of trees. I do have some photos of trees, but I, I thought, well, I don't know. Like, I would like to paint more instead of using just photos, sort of photos everywhere. So I was just trying to put some photos here and there. What I'm doing now is a reference for me, uh, for perspective that I don't have. Like right now, I'm trying to figure out perspective of things. And it's really hard for me to think about perspective while painting at the same time. So the easiest thing to do is just make make a cube uh, in the same scene that I was working on, and that allows me to kind of uh, uh, have a reference of a uh, of perspective that is really easy. So this kind of thing uh, is very very useful. Now I'm adding some um, more foliage on the foreground. All of this is going to be more detailed later. Right now I'm basically just sketching, sketching more and more to have a better idea of what the thing is going to look like at the end. Because I had no idea to this point how this is going to look like at the end. I'm trying to to add what I believe I need in terms of composition, uh, I needed some some mountains on the on the on the sides to make this look more hidden. Because uh, if, if if it's a base, it has to be partially hidden. It cannot be just there. Uh, it will be so easy to find. So the only way to show that is not that easy to find is that I put some hills on on, on the sides or something. Um, this is structure, uh, I was sketching it, this, this first, uh, later I, I will do some detail on it. Uh, everything that I'm doing right now is basically just more sketching, more and more, more sketching. Uh, and what you do actually, <laughs> like all the time is that, just a sketch and then clean the sketch. It's basically the same process uh, all the time. So something I'm missing right now is uh, atmosphere too. It's, it's very clean. You cannot see any fog on it. Um, all that kind of thing. Uh, we told before about having some uh, ships floating, floating around. <clears throat> Here I'm adding some more foliage, uh, but I want to integrate that foliage to the walls somehow because if he, if this ha this thing has been here for some time that's um, it, it makes sense that that happens <clears throat> so all this all this kind of a uh, detail can be added uh, really easy you can later you can you can later um, add some uh, photos of trees if you want to but doesn't mean you don't really need to sometimes so um, this perspective grid really helps me to do this kind of detail like adding lines uh, and stuff like that looks perfect uh, perfectly integrated 
integrated with the environment because it's the same perspective that I have on everything else. So there's no there's no mistake on perspective. Only the the mistake that I can do myself, like using it wrong or something. But the perspective of the of this grid is just perfect with this environment. So that's a that's another advantage of this technique. Um, obviously I'm talking about a lot of advantages but it actually has uh, disadvantages too so uh, one thing is uh, the first and huge uh, disadvantage is that you need two programs to start you need to learn how to use 3d max and you need to learn how to use photoshop so if if you are a digital painter you already know how to use photoshop uh, in terms of learning the tool, um, you could actually learn it very fast. If you are still learning how to paint, uh, then I will say it's very difficult uh, to find a balance uh, because the only reason that I do what I do with this is because I already knew how to paint and I did some 3D when I was uh, younger. So, well, like I'm an old man or something, but I'm not that old, but <laughs> I consider myself old compar in comparison with the, the stuff that I see online. People with 20 and 28 and 27 years doing like this crazy good art. Uh, I'm just 31 and I feel like I'm, I'm already behind or something <laughs> in comparison with, with uh, stuff that I, some kids are doing these days. Anyway, like I do, I did some 3D at some point, and I stopped doing digital completely. But for that time, I already knew a lot of digital uh, painting, so that helps a lot <clears throat> because I'm I'm not I'm no longer guessing too much when I'm when I'm painting. I already kind of know my way around it to make things look uh, decent. But I will say, if you're learning, uh, try to learn one stuff first. Try to learn uh, digital painting first, and then 3D, or at least le learn them separately. Don't start blending techniques uh, early because it's going to be difficult for a start, and you don't need it really. You need to get good at both. Not get not, and doing it both at the same time is not going to give you that. You're going to be very confused. So I will say, I mean, you can learn it at the same time, but don't use it at the same time. Is what I mean. Like what I'm doing right now, um, you can you can test, do some tests, but doing huge paintings when you're learning is going to be difficult. So try to use it uh, in a simple way first, like um, may maybe with just assets, maybe it's stuff that you don't love from the internet, uh, the modeling and the stuff you could try. But because you want to still uh, be learning how to paint, you, you're gonna maybe damage the learning curve. I will say, try to model some stuff alone uh, first in 3D and try to paint some stuff alone in, in Photoshop first before doing the blend techniques. Um, maybe you can do one and one and then do another one using both, something like that. Do, do some math about it, like uh, these many paintings, I will try to do a painting using both. Like Every three paintings I will do a, a blend between 3D and, and 2D. But if you, if what you do is only using 3D and 2D at the same time, uh, I will say you, you could get confused in terms of uh, what to do, what to learn, and stuff like that it's like it's so much so much stuff because 3d is for me i think 3d personally i believe is infinite you can do whatever whatever the hell you want and the the proof of that is you can you, can, you go to see movies right uh, most of the movies are done with the effects that are made on the same software that has like 20 years um, of existence maybe more I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how, how many years does uh, Maya or 3ds Max has but it's a lot and it's basically the same thing like the the program has changed renders have changed the way uh, the composition has changed but it's the same software I mean in terms of a 
we're not just stop using Maya and stop using 3ds Max and then we're using something completely different there are other ones but these ones are the kings these are these things have st uh, stayed for years and years and Photoshop is also basically the same thing I, I've been using Photoshop I use Photoshop like it when the version number seven or something like that um, that is really really old it's really old at least 14 years or something and I've been using it since then and I mean you have you have better tools now like right now you can do a lot of stuff that you can do uh, then like a smart this the smart objects you have now smart filters I recently discovered that uh, you can basically do changes with filters on the image and don't lose the original layer because it's a smart object you couldn't do that in the other version you had, you had to enter the smart object apply the 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 effect inside and then when you go outside okay you you have what you wanted but then if you want to change it you have to go inside again it, it, it may seem something small but it's a lot of uh, difference in terms of uh, workflow and, and in terms of uh, how quick uh, can you be using the, the program also it's a lot heavier <laughs> that's something I complain I complain all the time about Photoshop it's getting heavy very very heavy uh, for the computer to manage um, so you have to rely on tricks and stuff to to keep it light <clears throat> anyway I'm talking too much about stuff that you, you guys really don't care um, so right now I, I did it black and white for one moment uh, grayscale when I do grayscale is to see uh, the values I want to see um, if the image is, is uh, if, if you can read things easily you can read the elements that are on the image and <clears throat> that is something it's not that difficult really you, you just have to make sure that everything understands kind of and you have a range like from the darkest to the lightest but you don't have like blown up uh, com full white because there's no full white in any image unless it's modified like with the contrast and stuff like that or 100% uh, black anywhere uh, right now I'm just moving things around I'm doing the last changes on 3D the last changes that I need on my image because it's going to change um, this, this is going to be the last time that I that I open 3D Max just to change things uh, here I was trying to look for a, a communication antenna uh, things like that or something military that I can find uh, I didn't like any of that <laughs> I think I was trying to also look for a soldier or something but then I was like okay uh, let's do something quick um, very 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 quick um, <clears throat> I was lo also looking for a tank didn't, didn't find one that I liked also have to be futuristic so it's very hard to do the thing about looking for something specific like a futuristic tank is, is hard because uh, then you just paste in someone else's idea because there's no such thing as a futuristic tank um, what else this, this is very very uh, sketchy kind of tank I realize that it's very um, simple so it's just uh, something that's going to be on the background so it is not so important and putting it there in the background uh, then I can just paint on top of it uh, using the just, and, y y using Photoshop maybe just put some pictures on the on the on anything anything that is going to be detail on it on top but it doesn't have to be like because it's far away you can get you can get um, something kind of believable without without spending too much energy modeling here I decided I was going to erase these things I was just going to copy this uh, to put it on top because I have to fill this scene with more detail and 
sorry if I for one second I got stuck with the with the ideas that I was talking about uh, okay so right now what I'm going to be um, adding is a vehicle and some um, parts that I did in, in, at, at other moment I did some some pieces to use at, at kit bashing and for myself I made them myself so it's kind of like uh, just using my own resources. So this piece is supposed to be supposed to be something on the, on the floor, on the ground. But then I make okay, so I can make this huge, and it will it will be believable that this is a huge tank of something, and this ship is going to come pick it up. When in reality, the first idea when I, when I build that. Uh, model is was something super tiny it was like um, I don't know how the size of a leg of a person or something like that like a like a gas uh, tank or something uh, now these ones are kind of, were kind of like boxes but then I realized I kind of look like some kind of a generator somehow so I'm putting one on the back uh, where that guy is and a couple in the f um, near us that what happens when I do that is you can see the scale of things so you can see obviously we're gonna have another indication of scale which is going to be the characters but this helps too so right now I'm just looking for poses that already exist to see if if, if I find what I what I want in terms of a uh, in terms of pose without having actually to do it so this one helps uh, I'm just trying to see if I can put um, some a little bit more muscular guy and then export this and just open it with ZBrush and in ZBrush what I'm going to do is just take this 3D model which is really simple and just add a little bit of shapes to give a, a base for me to paint it doesn't have to be any su anything super fancy in terms of detail I'm just doing it so I can then when I'm going to paint on top I, I kind of know already uh, all the the details uh, where, where things should be I don't have to guess that much um, so I'm basically just working with volume not detail at all so this brush that, I, that I'm using which is a clay tube it's kind of uh, uh, useful for this kind of thing because it allows you to make very blocky shapes I could say is my favorite brush in ZBrush, although I could see why some people hate it. Uh, it's very, very messy when, when you're working with it, um, depending on the settings that you have. But I actually like it because it doesn't look like it's something final. I hate when something looks final because it's like if, if like cuts the, for me, it cuts the creative process. It's like if I were going for some super tight result and that's not what I want. I, I want something uh, messy where I can just keep playing with it and, and, and change stuff. It doesn't have to be extremely detailed or anything. <clears throat> okay, so right now you can see I'm just trying to have a better volume overall. I don't, have any, I don't need to have uh, any detail at all. Also, this kind of thing really um, <laughs> opens my mind to a, a bunch of details that I didn't, I didn't thought uh, before. For example, this having those uh, kind of like um, uh, stuff hanging on the on the belt um, makes it look a lot of um, like you can really see the the bulkiness of it and where everything is placed. But if I were doing it in, in drawing, I'm not sure I can get that. I mean, with my drawing skills, maybe uh, I could try, but not the, not this quick. I know, and I have I will have to do each uh, every time. And here, what I can do is just copy that guy <laughs> two or three times, and I still get the uh, the feeling that it's not the same person repeated. Um, that only happens here <laughs> on 3D. And it's very, I find this very useful. So I have these guys here, just put another color on them. And that's it. That, that very, that kind of looks like a, like a scene now with those guys in there. It, it, I, had, I had those missing. 
Something that else that I wanted to do was making a guy interacting with the with the scene itself. So I thought of maybe making a guy, you know, those guys that receive the planes that they have like these little sticks that glow. So I was I was um, thinking maybe I should do one of those, like in, just in front of the ship, in front of the the thing that it has to pick up, and do the same process, do the same process again, uh, exporting it and opening it on on ZBrush. And making the uh, the volume of the of the costume that the guy has. So about this tool that is called Das uh, 3D is a very uh, friendly uh, software. You can just download it for free uh, on the internet, and you get like this um, couple of, of characters that you can just use them. Um, you can just pose them. It's very very similar to Poser, if you guys remember that, that software. Uh, it's basically the same thing, um, but <clears throat> I will say in more detail, the, the characters are, look way better, look like, like plastic than the ones from Poser years ago. And this one, the advantage is that some, sometimes you actually export them and you, you, you can actually um, keep moving them a, a little on 3D Max. That's a, also a huge advantage. I'm not doing that because what I'm doing right now is very simple. Um, but I will say it's a very cool tool. It's a very cool tool to use. So I, I really like it. I really like the these DAS uh, software. Okay, so I'm trying to do some kind of hel weird helmet. Uh, this guy could have because of his job is basically have to control um, the flying the, the landing of this uh, huge ship uh, he, he has to kind of like tell him tell the ship like dude uh, just go a little bit more to the left or a bit more to the right or you're way too too fast whatever and I will I'll, I'll, I was thinking maybe it will be cool if the guys if the guy has a helmet that allows him um, to to kind of like uh, guide it better, like to maybe he could see like the the speed that the ship has more accurately, uh, stuff like that because of the helmet. At the end, you don't see it because it's very it's very small, but it helps to think of that. So. <clears throat> I was wrong about the that power happening the the last time that I opened the 3D. This is actually I think the last time that I opened 3D to change things. Um, so <clears throat> basically, another thing that I like to do a lot is to have a render uh, and use that kind of like a some kind of a um, ba uh, render to start uh, working, but not the not the final one and the final I will keep rendering while I do this and then I just change that image uh, it, would, it would, doesn't make sense if I explain it like this uh, but it's actually very useful because the thing is a good render could take about 20 minutes half hour or something like that depending on the size that the render is uh, so having something of good quality could be really slow and just waiting for that to happen uh, is not uh, productive, <laughs> let's say. Um, by doing it, just getting the first render that, I, that it gets out, like uh, maybe 30 seconds after start rendering, you have a poor image that you can start developing, uh, but then you can change it with the with the better render image that keeps rendering while you're working on the on the on the test one. Anyway. <clears throat> Here I'm just adding a lot of uh, shapes and details on top of, of the scene. Uh, I won't be going any back, uh, and I won't be going uh, again to to 3D, not anymore. And right now I'm just starting to paint. Uh, this, this is basically the process. Till now I, I was doing a lot of 3D. Now it's completely uh, 2D. And what I'm, what I'm doing at this moment is just making sure that the shape reads 
uh, correctly and I don't have any weird stuff uh, popping like like you see there you have a mountain uh, in the back of the of the tower that really messes the composition a lot right now I'm doing doing a grid because the grid helps me to to see the the mistakes uh, or the the lack of detail on anywhere uh, easier uh, because that way what I get is like uh, a constraint of a space to work with so when I have that constraint I can work more um, in, in specific areas without caring at all about the rest of the image and that really helps a lead at least helps me to understand the where I have to detail better um, instead of just jumping on the image from here to there uh, putting detail uh, on everything <clears throat> this this kind of like super white um, I like to erase them I don't like the very 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 bright things uh, unless it's like a light or something like that maybe I could keep it super bright but no sh these shapes that have these blown up white uh, I like to get rid of them so um, also by having this contrain allowed me to don't think about the rest of the image uh, I heard once that if you wanna do something huge just break it into small parts so doing this um, doing this grid what I'm actually doing is breaking it into small parts um, because it's, it can be it can, it can get very boring to work on the whole image at the same time you feel like you you, you will never finish but doing it this way you can kind of um, feel like you are achieving it slowly and it gives you a better feeling in my opinion that, that you can accomplish um, that you will you will soon end uh, uh, putting detail on this stuff because it can get it can get really boring to work on an image for a lot of time and just having this um, piece by piece uh, thing can really help you also allows you as, as I said before to spot the mistakes easier right now I have that guy floating around in the, in the second floor of the in the back and also has some very sketchy things uh, right now I'm adding detail to the detail to the plant to the tree that is in, in there but I don't need to add that much of detail these guys are pretty sketchy too I need to put some detail in those and also whatever idea comes to my mind right now adding some lighting to that door seems important to me <laughs> so that's what I'm doing and maybe like a, a tower here of, of light and well if I put a, a, a tower with light there I will get some kind of lighting here and that's this wall so that's also very important because it, it has to look accurate or at least accurate as possible um, so that's important too and adding that in there really helps to to get the, the image um, to feel more realistic <coughs> okay so adding this kind of uh, lines and shapes to the to the 3d object also makes it look more detailed so now you see you can see why I didn't put more detail on them when I was doing the 3d the 3d version because I, I actually don't need that uh, at least not for for this image if, you, if it's something that's going to be really close to us maybe I consider putting detail on the 3D it has to be super close and even even there depending on how, how close it is because right now I'm doing this um, um, soldiers and they don't have detail at all they don't have detail at all in terms of a 3D but I can paint a lot of, a lot of stuff on top of them and make them feel more realistic and it's actually just a bunch of lines <laughs> that are put together the, to make you um, to make you see detail but there's actually not too much detail in there <clears throat> so it's kind of like a trick you have to trick the people that's looking at the image basically and 
and like depending of the obviously depending of the goal of your painting this case is the for me is the entire scene it's not about character design even that I'm right now I'm basically designing doing a short like a quick version of a character design <laughs> um, it's not it's not the goal the goal is the image in in a whole it's a completely so uh, you, you have to keep that in mind because I could spend one day just doing that character in there the, just just doing the the amount of details that the, the character should have and that stuff you can literally just spend one day just doing that but that's not the goal <clears throat> so um, funny story and this part I'm doing a number but the image is flipped so when I when I flip the image again to the to the so for um, when I flip the the image for to to where it has to be like the the original uh, format of it which is the other side instead of looking like a zero five it's going to look like a 20 so I have to kind of modify the number later to make it look like a 2 instead of a just a 50 flipped um, so it's, it's, it's very weird um, and it's all recorded so you, you guys can see uh, the mistakes that I made and everything but it, it, it that kind of thing is also, it's also like uh, fun because there's a lot of stuff that comes out of mistakes right now I'm looking at these um, shapes and uh, it has a lot of patterns in the texture it's re very repetitive uh, I kind of have to get rid of that so first I'm just trying to put some detail on it uh, and now I'm actually just fixing that problem that I have everything looks repeated uh, for no reason other than it's made on 3D and these kinds of stuff happens on 3D when you use textures. Uh, this texture is actually made by myself, but it, but it, it looks repeated anyway because I didn't do it properly. It did very, it did it very quick. Um, <clears throat> also, another way to look at, at this technique of working by sections is that if you can make each section to look very good on its own, Obviously, when you have the full image completely, it looks way better. So that's another way to look look at it uh, and this, this technique. Um, I like to think of it that way. Like, <clears throat> the way um, I've been doing this, these huge paintings uh, is the, the only way that I, that I managed to, to achieve these huge paintings is by doing that, just cutting the image in pieces and then working that each piece separately um, to achieve the, the desired result um, I couldn't have done it really uh, the other way, other way because I don't feel like I'm actually going forward with it there are so many changes uh, on, on an image that you can do and if I don't do it, do it that way then I, I have no idea where to start what to do but doing this giving you this constraint working with the grid and just spending x amount of time on each section uh, will push you to just put detail on this part until the time time is over uh, and I use a timer sometimes I use a timer I put like maybe 30 minutes maybe one hour uh, per per square on the grid that's very very helpful uh, it, keep, it helped me keep things uh, accounted in terms of time. Time is very valuable these days. Uh, and also because I have stuff to do that is way more important, like work. So I cannot, I, in this kind of thing, which is so easy to just lose your time doing it, uh, accounting the time that you spend doing things is very, very important. So I encourage you to use timers uh, every time you can. That really it really helps a lot <clears throat> so um, other thing is that using the timer depending on, on, on which part of the grid are you uh, really help you understand how much you still have to work on that section because if the timer is not off yet then it means you haven't finished 
so you can still add more detail and you trust me you're gonna find where to put detail all the time you're gonna find mistakes to fix you're gonna find um, every in in all the in the all the image that you're working even if it's just this tiny uh, square this section that we're working on then what happens is that you will find you will look for things to to improve with that time so that's very important another thing that's way crazier and uh, than working with grid is uh, that I, I tried one is actually gave me a very good result was to work uh, for a number amount of minutes using um, one color so I, I just pick one color with the eyedropper and then put a three minutes so I cannot change the color for three minutes and sometimes I didn't even want to change the the color that I was using because I, I needed to, to do to I wanted to paint more time with it. Um, and sometimes I just um, did didn't need to spend so much time with it, but had to, to keep it anyway. So it train it changed my mind of first. It changed my mind in terms of uh, like what else can I do with this color. So at the end, the image looked a bit more. Um, uh, how do I say that? It gave me a feeling of working traditional because you cannot change your traditional painting uh, every five seconds like you can do on digital. You can just literally just change as many colors as you want, infinite times, uh, and you you won't get a brush. Uh, wet you want you have to clean your brushes uh, <laughs> that's a huge advantage but then if you don't have to change that you're you think about what can you paint with that color so you don't have to change it so much so often uh, to the other one so it kind of gave me that feeling where I just had to continue had to continue what else can I can I use this color where else is this color needed and at the end when I look at the it also made me I think in, in my own opinion made, made me be faster because I lose I lost less time changing colors uh, and concentrated just in one color it, I think it helped me be faster actually uh, on the painting at least more concentrated that, that if it was just changing color constantly um, that, that I think that's the the main reason why it why it worked because it helped me be, being co more concentrated um, in terms of uh, the colors that I was using. Um, so yeah, this this little time left on this tutorial. There is a there is a chunk of the the video that I lost completely um, when I when I added some details on the ship. But what the hell? This this kind of thing happens when you're recording, in, in especially when you're doing it by several days. Sometimes you forgot to record, or you lose a file, uh, stuff like that. Thank God I didn't lose the painting file. I would, that would be uh, uh, a tragedy. And yeah, you you can see how I'm, uh, I'm adding <laughs> stuff where it doesn't even. You, you could say you don't need to do those lines there in the back, but yeah, I, I see it. I see it because I'm working with this um, with this format of working this little space at this exact time, with this amount of time. So I can still put more and more and more detail, whatever I can. And it will, all, it will only make the image look better. That's the only result from this. Uh, you have to be careful. You have to be careful not doing something that will actually make the image worse but it's really hard to do uh, if you have this uh, 3D base because the 3D base makes everything look way more realistic immediately here I added a little bit of fog uh, behind the character because I need it to separate it more from the background <coughs> and I wanted those characters to pop up more uh, what else can we talk here? We are approaching the end soon. You can see the number 20 on the on, on the left. All right, so in this part of the of the image, 
what I'm looking for is to add more detail obviously maybe fixing the shape of the guy like the pose is bad uh, adding some detail on the vehicle there um, that kind of thing <clears throat> That vehicle that is in the back, I did it before for another um, drawing that I did, but it was a base to work on 2D, it wasn't a 3D um, image, but it was a base and it really worked, I, I really like how it looked, the 2D version of that, um, of that vehicle. Uh, now I'm thinking about rescuing it, <laughs> after doing this tutorial, I, now I'm thinking about rescuing it and implementing some assets that I had from uh, before and putting it putting it, putting them in there I think it will look very cool at the end <coughs> and right now I'm just adding some details here and there that I believe should make uh, the much more interesting uh, in my personal opinion I'm not saying that it actually looks interesting in my opinion looks it looks more interesting but Uncle say it's just cheap uh, brushes, brush strokes, um, and this one I wanted to make it look more. Uh, I wanted to make it look bigger, so I needed some details that really uh, make it feel like that. So some stripes, like the, like a, um, how you call that, like warning, warning straps, maybe could, could make it look bigger. Uh, because you are used to kind of know what size of those stripes are in real life and also because of the fog that it has it has a little bit fog on the top and what else <clears throat> here just putting a little bit more on detail in these guys <clears throat> I saw this on a movie I don't know it was a, I don't remember if it was a TV show or a movie but they had these uh, like a huge net on top of uh, uh, things on the camp, so you you sh you wouldn't see it from from far away or from the top if you were on an airplane. It looked more like a rock or a, a foliage than it looked like a box or something. <clears throat> Here I'm trying to put a little bit more texture. On this uh, foliage because it looks very different from the photo and that's not good here's some some parts of the the floor look really um, uh, superimposed there a little bit more detail on that ship sometimes when it gets stuck by that because it, it because I stretch or something so I, I keep the recording going without pausing it try to do that on the next next time so you don't have to uh, maybe you ask yourself what happening here <clears throat> right so just adding some stripes in there um, and at this point what I'm doing is just trying to clean things up a little I'm not, not only um, no longer too worried about the the details of it just in some parts maybe but I'm, I'm trying to like push this image to the finish like what do I need to make this look like this is done I'm, I'm not touching this image anymore and basically just finding mistakes, finding uh, things that you think the image needs um, and do them, <laughs> try to, to kill those those uh, things that you, you, you think it, need, it needs um, what else? <clears throat> some specular highlights here and there Also, you have to give the impression of detail. You don't have to paint like every detail exactly. You just have to make it look like it has detail. That's a very important thing to to keep in mind. That part of the ship with this this, this little 
legs open. Uh, I, I, that's the part that I lost. Um, I couldn't record it. Anyway, uh, the idea was that this ship is going down to to carry that the huge thing on the bottom and grabs it with those like little uh, leg leggy things, kind of like uh, insect uh, legs or something. So putting some detail on the ship, the huge ship in the back. Maybe it wasn't that needed, but in terms of uh, the overall quality of the image, it looks like it needed more uh, detail on that ship because everything else looks super clean, at least from the far away. And so this one kind of looked bad. So it has to look kind of cohesive, kind of accurate to whatever whatever the rest of the image looks like. You're gonna have like a huge uh, painting with everything in detail on the foreground and having that thing on the back just calling attention of by how bad it looks. Um, closing details, I, I think adding some shadows here and there or symbols, um, whatever text you need in there. Um, making sure the the shapes read as intended. Um, some parts that look really really sketchy, make them just a tiny bit better. Um, stuff like that. That's the kind of thing that you worry about in the end um, when you're finishing your image. <coughs> These guys should have a little bit more detail because they're closer. Or fixing the lighting a little looks too dark uh, looks a tiny bit better those <laughs> arms are too skinny uh, for being a soldier now it's a bit better now I think um, what else what else this symbol is wrong and that and that the back of the the, the thing that is in the back of the, of the gun, the heel is looks very very bad. Like what calls my attention more is the symbol on the, the gun. It's wrong. It's not like the one in the tower, so I had to change that. <coughs> Here, have to make that a little bit less defined. More like a general feeling of what it is instead of a super detailed mountain in there. I don't need a super detailed mountain in there right now. Um, everything else looks pretty much good, so we're, we're kind of good to go. Already in the ending of this uh, video. <clears throat> I really hope you like it. Let me know um, if you do in the comments. We'll try to do more of these ones. If you want to keep looking, uh, you want to keep uh, seeing some process of these kind of images, uh, it will be my pleasure to, to do them. I will also try to do some character design and more vehicle designs. So right now this is what I have uh, for the background and all the layers turning, turning them on to, to the final image. This is kind of what I have. So, <clears throat> changes on the heels on the back. And now the render, some fog, more detail, more fog, <laughs> pass of detail, more fog, <laughs> another pass of detail, and that's it. That's basically it. At the, at the end, I have some color adjustments to give that greenish uh, feeling and kind of like windy. Uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial, please, please give me a thumbs up if you like it so I can keep doing this, um, give me some comments. This week we have an image from Robert Crescencio in the Share Your Art group on, on Facebook. You can go to that group, share your art, uh, you, don't have, you don't have to pay anything, you don't have to do anything, just share your art there. Also you can share tutorials or other YouTube channels that you like. Uh, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to say something to me or if you want to um, You know like get in touch for whatever reason uh, Thank you very much and see you next time